in the previous part of lesson my childhood we read that in which type of family um, abdul kalam was born we also learned how he earned his first wages and now we are going to read a uh, few more incidents from his life and obviously everything is going to be from his childhood now uh, abdul kalam says every child is born with some inherited characteristics into a specific socio economic and emotional environment and trained in certain ways by figures of authority means this this actually applies to every child so every child takes birth in a family where certain kinds of rituals are there and um, you know special kind of uh, means you can say every family is special having different rituals having having different thoughts so what a child becomes when he uh, turns into an adult depends upon uh, what kind of family he had has so in so there are some inherited characteristics which comes by uh, which come by genes into a specific socio economic means is what kind of society he has what kind of economic condition his family is having at that time when he was being brought up by the parents and then emotional environment is also very necessary um because uh, how you behave how you are being treated at your home that also is very important in developing your personality and trained in certain ways by figures of authority figures of authority here you can say the uh, your parents your elders at home who are actually developing trying to develop uh, the uh, the good characteristics in you and want you to make a good citizen of country and also a good person which can be respected in society so all these factors are very important in uh, making a child child a better human being i have inherited now what did abdul kalam inherit from his parents i inherited honesty and self discipline from my father from my mother i inherited faith in goodness and deep kindness and so did my three brothers and sister so these are the main characters we read in the beginning of the lesson also that his father was very simple austere and uh, then other thing we read about mother was she was too kind that she used to feed many people at her home so there are these characteristics which abdul kalam got from his parents i had three close friends in my childhood now he comes to his friends means society who are they ramanand shastri arvindan and siv prakashan all these boys were from orthodox hindu brahmin families now which families are called um, orthodox families which are um, conservative you can say sometimes the conservative and they believe in old type of traditions and they don't want their children to get distracted from that which means a family may, uh, which the rules which are followed in the family from generations to generations you have to follow them in orthodox family if you go beyond or if you go against their rules they won't uh you know accept it yes uh, and then then they have certain kind of beliefs which you have to follow they can be related to religion they can be related to your moral behavior so you have to follow them in orthodox families so these boys were from orthodox hindu brahmin families and as we know abdul kalam is from muslim family as children none of us ever felt any difference amongst ourselves because of our religious differences and upbringing now he says that in my childhood when we were children we never felt means while playing with each other while talking to each other while eating from each other's plate or enjoying things we never felt that there is any difference between us means i am muslim and they are from hindu a uh, brahmin families so uh, ram in fact ramanand shastri was the son of 
Pakshi uh, Lakshman Shastri. Now you can see he, he, his father was Shastri or you can say Pandit and uh, he was the high, high priest of Rameshwaram temple. Now see one of his friends was son of priest of Rameshwaram temple. Later he took over the priesthood of the Rameshwaram temple from his from his father. Now later on, what be, uh, what happened? Uh, Ramanath Shastri also became priest of that, uh, you know, um, temple because his father used to be the priest of the same temple. So Arvindan went into business of arranging transport for visiting pilgrims. Now, who are pilgrims? Pilgrims are those people who visit some religious place. In Hindi, you call them Tirthyatri. So Arvindan got into the business of arranging transport for pilgrims who came there to see, to worship at Rameshwaram temple. And Shiv Prakashan became a catering contractor for the Southern Railways. And what did Shiv Prakashan became, uh, become? He was a catering con contractor. Catering means who used to arrange eatable things like um, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and other snacks uh, to railways. So he became contractor in that department. During the annual Shri Sita Ram Kalyanam ceremony, this was the ceremony which used to be organized every year. Our family used to arrange boats with a special platform for carrying idols of the Lord from the temple to the marriage site situated in the middle of the pond called Ram Tirth, which was near our house. And even Abdul Kalam's family used to arrange boats and these boats were special. They had a kind of platform so that idol can be kept on that god idols uh, must be of gods and goddesses so you can see that a muslim family used to do the work for arranging something for the ceremonies at temple and the uh, place has been given here how uh, from where to where they used to arrange the boats events from ramayana and from the life of prophet Prophet is the guru of, as, as we, um, you know, Hindus uh, worship Rama in the same way Muslims worship prophet. Their, their style of worshiping is different, but they also have God. So we, uh, we actually appreciate and we talk, talk a lot about Ra, uh, our Lord Rama's life. And in the same way, they also talk about, they worship, they idolize, and they tell the incidents from the life of prophet to, uh, to their children. So, but, but in my family, means Abdul Kalam is saying, in my family, when I was growing up, I used to hear stories from Ramayana, as well as from the religious scriptures of Muslims means both were given same important importance and bedtime stories were from the life of Ram or, and prophet also. And who used to tell the stories? My mother and grandmother would tell the children in our family. One day when I was in the fifth standard at the Rameshwaram elementary school, a new teacher came to our class. And I used to wear a cap which marked me as a Muslim. You people must have noticed that Muslims, when they actually, um, you know, read namaz or they worship, they wear a certain kind of cap on their head, which is actually identity of theirs. And, and you can easily differentiate that, yes, this person is Muslim if that person is wearing that special kind of Cap. And Abdul Kalam used to wear that daily and that marked him that he is a Muslim. And I always sat in front of row next to Ramana the Shastri. And you know that friends sit beside friends. As you also, when you when you sit in your classroom, you, you try to find a seat near your friend. So in the same way, Ramana the Shastri was friend of Abdul Kalam and he used to sit, you know, in row next to him. 
and then uh, this is the special kind of boat you can see in the picture and he used to wear sacred thread uh, see if cap identifies a muslim and what does identify a hindu hindu especially from brahmin families um, normally they wear a sacred thread you must have noticed that is a white thread and you call it janeu in uh, hindi so ramanand shastri used to wear that sacred thread and i used to wear my cap the new teacher could not stomach a hindu priest son with a muslim boy now new teacher was not at all ready to accept this he was not able to stomach means digest he could not tolerate he could not digest that a hindu priest son is sitting with a muslim boy in accordance with our social ranking as the new teacher saw it i was asked to go and sit on the back bench social ranking means maybe they were considered to be from the people of minority and maybe the there there was a kind of discrimination at that time so the teacher asked the uh, asked the muslim boy means abdul kalam to sit at back bench i was asked to go and sit on the back bench i felt very sad and so did ramanand shastri because they both were friends he looked utterly utterly means continuously downcast downcast means feeling down feeling sad as i shifted to my seat in the last row the image of him weeping when i shifted to the last row left a lasting impression on me now when i was shifted to the last seat he was almost crying so it made a very deep impression on me and i was totally touched after school we went home and told our respective parents about the incident now when um, after dispersal well, when we went to our homes ramanand shastri told the incident to his father and i told this incident to my father so lakshman shastri summoned the teacher now father of ramanand shastri called summoned means called called the teacher and in our presence told the teacher that he should not spread the poison of social inequality and communal intolerance in the minds of innocent children now you can see how great ramanand shastri's father was and especially at that time when abdul kalam was a small child he and and even though he was a priest at temple still he didn't believe in discrimination he told the teacher that you should not spread the poison of this inequality on the basis of religion don't spread communal intolerance that one community cannot stand beside other community so don't spoil the children don't poison the ears of children by spreading such nonsense things he bluntly asked bluntly means uh, directly with, without hesitating he bluntly asked the teacher to either apologize or quit the school and the island now he uh, bluntly means he directly said to him that either you say sorry what you have for for what you have done or you just leave the school and at the same time island also you can't live here if you will keep on believing such nonsense things not only not only did the teacher regret his behavior now the teacher regrets means a fee, felt sad on his behavior but the strong sense of conviction lakshman shastri conveyed ultimately reformed this young teacher now the strong belief of lakshman shastri totally changed the reformed means brought improvement now you can say that lakshman shastri made that person change his behavior and he was totally improved and and uh, maybe this teacher was young teacher and uh, now he learned that it's bad thing to discriminate on the basis of religion now you can see both friends are again sitting together fine uh on the whole 
the small society of rameshwaram was very rigid rigid means stubborn who doesn't make any changes it was very rigid in terms of segregation of different social groups means separation of different social groups was very prominent in this island however my science teacher shiva subramanya ayer though an orthodox brahmin with a very conservative wife was something of a rebel rebel means uh, a person who is against something who stand against and who um you know is not ready to accept what is there in the family now there was a teacher science teacher whose name was shiv subramanyam ayer he was an orthodox brahmin but he never believed in discrimination but his wife was opposite to him she was conservative he did his best to break social barriers so that people from varying backgrounds could mingle easily but this man science teacher did everything to break these barriers to stop people from staying away from each other and in the on the contrary what did he try he tried to mix the people with each other in spite of different religion mingle means mixing he wanted all the people to live together and he did everything which he could do one day he invited me to his home for a meal his wife was horrified at the idea of a muslim boy being invited to dine dine means to eat in her ritually pure kitchen now that woman believed that her kitchen was so pure and if some muslim boy will enter it then it will become what it will become it will not stay pure so when i was invited his wife was not able to accept that a muslim boy will eat in her kitchen she refused to serve me in her kitchen shiva subramanyam i was not perturbed means he was uh, not disturbed actually and also he didn't get angry with his wife but instant instead but what did he de- do he served me with his own hands and sat down beside me to eat his meal now he didn't go, uh, get angry on uh, his wife what did he do he served abdul kalam with his own hands and also sat beside him to eat his meal his wife watched us from behind the kitchen door now the wife was peeping uh, through the kitchen door i wondered whether she had observed any difference in the way i ate rice drank water or cleaned the floor after the meal now this is this line is very important why because now abdul kalam says that i was wondering means i was thinking at that time that when she is watching us eating meal did she notice any kind of difference in the way a hindu eats and a muslim eats because i think i eat in the same way as means i ate rice i drank water i cleaned the floor after the meal just like same as other people do so was there any difference in my eating and um, my teachers eating when i was leaving his house shiva subramanyam ayer invited me to join him for dinner again next weekend I, i got the invitation to come next weekend also observing my hesitation he told me not to get upset now i was hesitant because i didn't feel good because uh, his wife was not at all happy when i came there he told me not to get upset saying once you decide to change the system such problems have to be confronted now see what did his teacher say he says that once you decide to change the system which is prevailing in the society and which is not good then obviously these are the problems which you will have to face confront means to face you you will have to face such problems when i visited his house the next week shiv subramanyam ayer's wife took me inside her kitchen 
and served me food with her own hands. To my surprise, next time when I visited him, it was totally changed and his wife served me food with her own hands. Then the Second World War was over and India, India's freedom was imminent, means it, it was clear and um, it, it was something which cannot be avoided now. And uh, Indians will build their own India. This is what uh, we, uh, you know, heard in our video also. When um, this statement was given, Indians will build their own India. So um, now Second World, was, War, World War was over and it was about to happen. Means India's freedom was about to be declared. Now Gandhiji said Indians will build their own India. The whole country was filled with an unprecedented optimism. Unprecedented means which was totally new, which was never experienced before. So optimism, you know that it's about being positive, being uh, hopeful. So now India was full of hopes. I asked my father for permission to leave Rameshwaram and study at the district headquarters in Ramnathpuram. Now I wanted to go out for playing. This is the scene from the home of science teacher, right? Then he told me, this paragraph is really important, last one. He told me as if thinking aloud. Thinking aloud means he told me, uh, but, but his style was as if he was thinking, but in loud tone. Abul, I know you have to go away to grow. Does the seagull not fly across the sun alone and without a rest? You must have heard about this bird seagull and, and it is believed that it goes beyond, is it, it goes beyond the sun, it goes near the sun. And does it, it needs anybody to give him company? No, he goes there alone. He quoted Khalil Gibran to my Khalil Gibran is great author. To my hesitant, hesitant is means mother is little, uh, mother is having a kind of hesitation to send the child outside the town. She is a bit afraid. Now his father tried to explain this thing to his mother by saying the lines of Khalil Gibran and which are those lines. Your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. Now see this line, your children are not your children because they are God's children. And they are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. Means uh, now, now just imagine when a child takes birth in a family. Now you have to listen to this point very carefully. When a child takes birth in the family, in the beginning year, years of his life, parents take care of him, eating, education, their, their social needs, their phys uh, you know, every needs are being taken care by the family. But if the parents will not allow their children to go out alone, would their children be able to be, uh, be able to be a successful person in their life? If they will remain tied to their parents only? No, not at all. So you, uh, in these, through these lines, it is being explained that they are separate lives, means sons and daughters are different lives, which are desiring to live their own life. So when they come through you, but not from you, they come through you, you are just the medium, means parents are just the medium to give a child life, to give a life to somebody but actually they are not from the parents they are actually from the god and they are different lives you may give them your love but not your thoughts you can love your children in you know uh, without limits means beyond limits but you cannot give them your thoughts you cannot force them to do something which you want and they don't want for they have their own thoughts. Because when a child grows up, he starts having his own thoughts and parents cannot force upon them their thoughts. So children are also different individuals 
and they do have right to live their lives but till they are not able to think independently parents have to take care of them and then parents should allow their children to go and live their own life so this is uh, what we have read from an extract from wings of fire and obviously it's written by apj abdul kalam